When installing an aftermarket car audio amplifier, you're going to need to make a connection between the positive terminal of your vehicle's battery and the amplifier itself. Now, in order to properly make this connection and avoid issues, it is critical that we have one of these, an inline fuse. Now, let's clear something up right away. The point of the inline fuse isn't necessarily to protect your car audio gear, but actually to protect the wire itself, which in turn protects your vehicle. If there were to ever be a short circuit malfunction, with this power wire, the fuse does its job by actually burning and breaking the circuit, thus burning the fuse before the wire itself could potentially start on fire. Now, when it comes to determining exactly where this inline fuse should be on this power wire, there's a common industry recommendation that it should be within 18 inches of the battery terminal. So if I make all these connections and I measure this distance and it's less than 18 inches, everything is perfectly safe and good to go, right? Well, maybe not. In this video, I want to expand upon that 18 inch rule of thumb recommendation and give you guys some tips that can lead you to a far more reliable and robust install. Now really quick before we get into it, a quick shout out to our show sponsor, New Concepts, who has a wide variety of power wire, speaker wire, signal wire, and power distribution components for your next car audio build. They also have a full line of amplifier kits that include everything you need for an amplifier install. Personally, I've always used New Concepts for a long time, long before I even started the channel, and I've always had great results. Consider them for your next car audio project, and you guys can learn more at the link down in the video description. So first off, why the recommendation to keep this less than 18 inches? Well, in general, it's just to keep this length of wire relatively short. Now, why would that matter though? Why would we care about the length of this wire? The power is still going to get to the amplifier regardless of where we put this fuse in line. Why would the length of this section matter? Well, my friends, it matters for a very important reason and that's because this section of wire right here is not protected by the fuse. Let's just imagine if we will that this is installed and let's say that this connection here somehow becomes disconnected. Let's say that the wire gets loose over time, or let's say there's an accident, heaven forbid, and let's say that this wire were to get cut. Let's say that somehow a short circuit condition exists between here and here. What's going to happen is that wire is going to short circuit, it's not protected by the fuse, and it's going to potentially cause a fire. For this reason, the better strategy here for this length of connection isn't necessarily to keep it under a certain value, but rather I would recommend that you keep this as short as possible. In order to keep this as short as possible, you're going to need to make installation considerations when it comes to actually mounting your inline fuse. You're going to want it to be near the battery. That's simple enough, right? But there are some other installation recommendations I have for you guys to prevent this from potentially being an issue. One big recommendation would be to make sure, like I said, that this inline fuse is mounted with a bracket. And you want that bracket to be a good design, very strong, you don't want it to be vibrating because you don't want it to potentially be weakening this connection over time if the wire is moving freely from the inline connection here, it can loosen that screw over time. You want your inline fuse to be robustly and securely mounted. Now another huge installation consideration that I personally always like to take is I like to make sure that I do some sort of secondary mounting of this wired connection. I don't like to rely just on the connection of the inline fuse itself. I like to add zip ties to this wire to secure it in place so that if this connection were to ever come loose, there's no way that this wire can pop out and rotate and potentially touch the vehicle ground. So oftentimes I'll use zip ties to make sure that that is prevented from happening. And another good solution is when you're actually fabricating or building your own custom bracket to hold your inline fuse, something you can do is add a couple of holes in that bracket that allow you to run a zip tie around this part of the wire right here and clamp that in place. Again, that way you're not only relying upon the inline fuse screw to hold the wire, you now have a secondary holding option with that zip tie 
tie here holding it to the bracket. At the end of the day, when you're installing an aftermarket amplifier and making these wiring connections, the most important thing to remember is that this section of wire is unprotected. Now, there are many other common questions when it comes to doing car audio wiring, like what size wire should you use? What size fuse should you use? How can you wire multiple amplifiers and other car audio gear? If you guys are interested in those topics, I have related videos here on the channel. Next time you need wire and wiring accessories for a car audio build, be sure to check out our show sponsor, New Concepts. A big thanks to them along with Jerry and the rest of the Patreon membership team for making these videos possible. And thank you guys for tuning in and watching.